Hey everyone and welcome to the first of my miscellaneous tutorials and this is just going to be a quick fire tutorial based on a random topic which seems to have been getting interest when I was showing some of the progress of my current uh, one game a month game jam. So what we're going to be making is this very simple audio visualization of some cubes dancing about to a bit of music of your choice. This will be part one of two, so we'll be making the logic and functionality today, and in the next video we'll be making the material, which will react based on the position and updates accordingly for the different cubes. Okay, so to start with, you can do this from a completely empty project. I don't have anything in mind yet, just a few folders ready for what we'll be placing in here. And the main thing that you will need to do is go to the Edit tab, and under here, select the Plugins option. Navigate down to the Audio Plugins, and inside of here, we just need to scroll down and find the Sound Visualization plugin. If you don't already have that enabled, which you probably won't by default, then enable that, restart the project, and you'll be back to where I am now. With all of that set up, we've got everything that we need ready for the functionality of the cubes to react based on the music that we'll be uh, plugging in. And of course, the only other thing you'll need, I've just added in as well my audio file, so I tend to have a copy of Waltz of the Flowers just because it's one of the soundtracks on my system, which I already know is a .wav. Um, MP3s won't work, so you need to make sure that you have a, a working audio file or a music track of the WAV type to import into the project. When you have that, it can be of any length, and we'll be using this inside of our Blueprint. So if we go over, first of all, to the Blueprints folder, create a new Blueprint class, and this can just be of the actor type. I'll just give this a name of BP underscore EQ controller, and we'll go in here, and this is where all of the logic in our project is going to be held. Okay, so inside of this blueprint, the first thing we want to create is an audio component, and just place inside of the audio component, make sure you just put in the music track that you've already brought into the project. I'm going to drag this into the event graph, and off of the event begin play, we just want to drag this out and start playing the music straight away. We're then going to take care of spawning the grid, and this is just going to be the visual representation, and I found that throwing everything into an array and spawning it dynamically rather than placing it by hand is just a bit of a time saver, and of course you can then start playing around with uh, more interesting looking algorithms to create something more visually interesting than what we're going to have here. But this is just to show the process of automating this. So if we go down and add a new function, and just going to call this function spawn grid and all we're going to do basically is loop through our array to spawn a certain amount of cubes based on the number that we plug in and save all of these out so that we can use them to manipulate a little bit later on. So first thing we want to do is get our for loop. As I said this is going to loop through based on the amount of times that we give it in the editor for the number of cubes that we want spawned so we're going to pull one off of this so we're going to do an integer minus an integer just because of the zero based array and from this value we're going to promote this to a variable. So we'll promote this to a variable, we'll just name this variable number of cubes and from here every time we loop through this we're going to spawn an actor and we'll do a spawn actor from class and the next thing we want to do actually is make this class. So if we just go back over create another actor class, and we'll call this one BP underscore cube. And we don't need to fill this out right now, it just gives us something to come back here and fill this empty slot, otherwise we're going to get compilation errors if we try and hit the, uh, the compile button. And to keep this nice and simple, we're just going to work on a nice simple grid base. So we want to split the structure pin for the transform, so we can start placing the location of the cubes. And because we just want to focus on two of the axes, I'm going to take the spawn transform location and we're going to make this into a vector of its own. This just means that we can then split out quite simply and ignore the z axes because I'm just going to make all of these flat so they'll all spawn on zero on the z axes. And from here, for the x and the y, I just want to do an integer times a float. So we'll get an int times float copy this down and plug this into the y-axis, promote the x-axis, so this is going to be our rows, so we'll promote this to another variable, and we'll just call this row, and then pull off the y-axis, and again we're going to promote this to another variable called column this time. Okay, so we have our rows and our columns ready, and we're going to start incrementing these as we go through in just a moment, and what we want to multiply these by is the distance that we want between each of the cubes. So again, we're just going to pull off of here and promote this to a variable, and this one I'm going to call distance, and I'll just plug this in to our float down here as well, as they'll both be using the same distance. Now the important thing is that we want to make sure that the number of cubes and the distance are both exposed by pressing this eye icon, and that just means that when we come over, pull the EQ control into the map, we can see that we now have the option to set the number of cubes we want spawned and the distance between them. Now I don't think this is going to matter, but I've not tested it. So just to be safe, I'm going to drop the collision handling down and always spawn and ignore collision just to make sure that it doesn't try to stop the cubes colliding with each other if they're too close and skip a cube because then obviously we're not going to get the full visual 
aspect that we want and collisions don't really matter in this case. Now I'm just going to pull off of the return value. I'm going to promote this to another variable and I'm going to call this one BP cube array. With this made, I'm going to come over to the small icon just here. I'm going to change this to an array from a single variable type. Tell it that we do want that to change just because that's a bit faster than finding the type. Now from this, what we want to do is actually get our BP underscore cube array. So we're going to drag that in and we want to pull off of here and add something to this. So every time we loop through this, we're just going to add the return value into the cube array that we've just created. And this is what we'll be manipulating and updating a little bit later when we've got all of our cubes ready to play with. Next, we want to drag the row in and we want to add one to the current row. So we're going to just use an increment value here. So just press plus plus and we can increment this by one. And then every time we do this, we want to do a branch check. We just want to make sure that we haven't got past the maximum number of cubes for each individual row. So to do this, we want to again get access to our row value. I'm going to pull off here and see if this equals to something. Uh, we want to truncate a float value that we'll be getting in a moment. So get the truncate function. And the value that we want is the square root of something, which is why this needs to be a float. And then we're just going to pull in our number of cubes and plug that in to the square root. So this is going to get the square root of the number of cubes that we want spawned in total convert that to a float, we'll truncate this back to an integer just because we're working with two different variable types and then we can plug this into the condition. Now if that comes back true, so if, if that is the case and we've reached the maximum number of cubes that we want in our row, then we also want to increase our column, so we'll drag in the column, we'll do another increment value, and then with that done we can set the row, so alt drag the row back in and we'll set that to be zero. So what this is going to do now is that we'll then be multiplying our row again by zero uh, by the distance, but we'll be adding one to the column, so it'll be one column along and reset the row back to spawning back at the start point. So that is our spawn grid function. So after the event begin play we can pull off of our call to play the music and we can call our spawn grid function and we can actually just check that this will be working so we'll go back into our bp underscore cube i don't know why my windows have decided to place themselves randomly but it seems to do this on all of my projects now so i'm just going to place those back and what we want to do is we will add a static mesh if you don't have a static mesh in here i've just gotten a really simple cube and the main difference between this and the cube we get in the engine is that on the mesh inside of the inside of blender if you show the pivot point, I've set mine to be the bottom, just so that when we're expanding the size of these, it's expanding from the bottom. If you use the standard Unreal Cube, which would be perfectly fine for this, then it's just going to expand from the middle, so you get a slightly different looking result. But the main thing is that we have something visual to represent this, so inside of our BP underscore cube, we just want to make sure that this has an object in here for you to look at. And with that done, we can now come back in here, make sure you've got the EQ controller selected. I'm going to get rid of the floor just so this doesn't interact with it or interrupt. And I'm going to give this a number of cubes of 9 with a distance. I think the distance needs to be 200. I think that is the standard size of the Unreal Cube, and that's what I went by. So now if we spawn that, the best thing to do rather than pressing play is to simulate so you stay where you are. And we can see that we have our 9 cubes spawned into the world. So these are now ready to be altered, and we can start changing the scale of these based on the music. So to do this back in the event graph, we're going to pull off of the event graph first of all, and this is where we're using the function which is specific to the plugin that we've added, and what we want is the calculate frequency spectrum. So just pull that off of here. Now we're going to fill the sound wave with, again, the same music that we're playing up here at the beginning, and we can promote this to a variable as well because we'll need this a bit later, and I'm just going to call this track. And of course, if you wanted, you could expose this, and again, you can play about then with different audio tracks inside of the editor rather than needing to keep coming back into the blueprints. Now for the start time, quite simply, we want the game delta time, or the time in seconds. So we'll get the game time in seconds even. The spectrum width is just going to be the number of cubes that we've added into our array, and that's why I've done it this way, so that we have have this value pre-filled for us so we can't get anything wrong this way so we're going to pull the array in we're going to get the length of the array and we're just going to plug the result of the length into the spectrum width the time length i'm just going to set this to a value of 0.1 now off of here we also want the out spectrum so this is going to be based on the number of elements that we've plugged in here so we're going to need to store this for later as well so again i'll promote this to a variable and i'll just call this spectrum and again we want a copy of the bp cube array we're going to do a for each loop for every element inside of this array so we'll do it for each loop and quite simply we're just going to adjust the scale of the actor in the loop that we've gotten to based on the spectrum in the same point of that array so we're just going to pull off here do a set actor scale 3d we're going to control drag in the spectrum array we're going to get a certain element within this so we'll just get a copy and we'll plug in the array index we want the absolute value from this and the reason for this i'll actually show you in a moment 
In fact, if we don't do this to begin with, I'm going to pull off of here just so we can see why these steps have been taken. So if we first of all just pull off and make the scale into an array and we can just get this and we want to scale the Z axes. So this is going to be scaling the Z axes literally based on what the current spectrum value is returned from this point of the array. So if we hit compile now again, this will be working already. If we hit simulate, uh, we can see that we have no cubes. And the reason being is if we just select one of the cubes, we can see that we have some values coming in and most of these seem to end up as a negative value. So this is why we're going to come in and we want to stop this. And off of here, we're first of all going to turn, get the absolute value. So regardless of whether this is a plus or a minus, we're going to always return the positive value. And if we plug that straight back in, this is going to be a little bit better, but still not exactly what we want. So we can now come back in and try and find the cubes. Uh, the other reason we couldn't see them is if I just remove this, probably notice this, but you kind of miss things like this when you're recording them, is that we've left the X and the Y axes at zero. So we want to make sure that these are one. This way we're actually going to see something at least. So if I go back in, press simulate, and there you go. We can see, we can actually see them. Some are going down quite far, some, or well, one is going up. So this is the only one with a uh, positive value at the moment for some reason, as far as the spectrum is concerned. So this is why we then want to plug our absolute value in. With that done, at least now they're all going in the correct direction, but again, you can see that the scale of this is a bit too extreme. So we're going to come back in one last time and multiply this by a float, and I find something like 0.1 works quite well here, and then just plug that result into the Z axis. Now if we press play or simulate, we can come over and we can see that is a little bit more subdued, and although we're only getting the silhouette at the moment, you can see that the general concept, the idea is definitely working. Now the other thing I like to do is I'm just going to really quickly create an instance of this and change the color so that we can see this a little bit better. And now this isn't the final material that we're going to be using, so this doesn't matter too much. This is just for demonstration purposes. The material is going to be covered in its own videos. So what I'm doing is just turning this to white and press play now so we can at least see that the cubes have different heights. Now what I like to do is that looks a little bit too uniform, it's kind of stepping which makes sense because we're going through the array of cubes and the array in the spectrum in order, so the sign is going from lowest to highest in relation to the positions of the grid that we've spawned. So what I find is making quite a cool looking effect is to pull in the cube array and as soon as we spawn the grid I'm just going to shuffle this and this basically just changes all of their positions in the array to random spots. So now when we come back in and hit simulate, we can see that we're not getting quite as uniform a result. And that just looks a little bit more interesting at least. Now that's completely optional, but that is what I used to get the final result in the demonstration that I showed earlier. And I think the only real difference is that I would need to zoom out a lot more. Under the EQ controller, I think I set this to 196, I think was a perfect square. Yes. So that, that's pretty much what I was using previously, as well as the emissive material that we're going to go through next time. So with all of that done, that is the first step taken. That is the logic and the functionality behind actually using the sound and the audio file to manipulate the size of the cube. So this is our EQ visualizer we now have ready to go. And we just need to add the final visual elements to this and actually create the material. Hopefully this has proven interesting and useful. If it has, don't forget to hit the like button and share the video around, that really helps. Doing these one-time topic specific tutorials is kind of new, so if you guys do enjoy this, if this is something you want to see more of, then do let me know in the comments as well. And of course, subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with more content on this playlist and any of the other tutorial playlists I have going. As ever though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.